So anyways, what's PGTA? Here we are finally. PGTA stands for Pre-Implantation Genetic Testing for Aneuploidy. This is Fertility Friday with Katie Lee, CGC. If you're TTC waiting for your BFE or you're wondering about PGT, listen to Katie Lee, CGC on Fertility Friday. Hi guys, it's me, Katie Lee, CGC, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to do a quick dive into PGTA and explain exactly what it is. Last week, I released a video on four common misconceptions about pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy or PGTA. I realized I needed to back it up one step further, and for those of you who are just starting to research and learn about PGTA, explain really quickly what it is in a short, hopefully like two or three minute long video. So if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, because I have loads of content planned on PGTA, genetic testing that you can do on your embryos to screen for chromosome imbalances. I used to think when I started in this field that PGTA was a pretty simple test, well, that's really not always the case. There can be a lot of nuances with PGTA, and I want to be here to break down some of those nuances, help explain some of the results that can come back, and talk about some of the data that's out there regarding PGTA testing. So anyways, what's PGTA? Here we are finally. PGTA stands for Pre-Implantation Genetic Testing for Aneuploidy. And this test also used to be known as PGS, pre-implantation genetic screening. PGTA and PGS are the exact same thing. It is just two different acronyms to describe the same type of testing. Another acronym that used to be used or sometimes used is CCS, comprehensive chromosome screening. Again, all the same thing. Let's break down this acronym. P is for pre-implantation. That means that the embryo would be tested before it's implanted into your body. So you actually get a result on the embryo while it's frozen at your IVF clinic. And then you and your doctor use the genetic results to decide which embryo to thaw and implant into your, into your uterus. So pre-implantation, testing done before the embryo is implanted. G is for genetic, T is for testing. It's a type of genetic test. Yes, that's undeniable. And then lastly, for aneuploidy. Aneuploidy is the scientific term for chromosome imbalance. Most people on our planet have 46 chromosomes in every cell of their body. Somebody who's chromosomally typical um, like myself, I've had my karyotype done and I have 46 chromosomes. That would be considered euploid, chromosomally normal. And the opposite of that, any deviation from those having those 46 chromosomes would be aneuploid. So having a missing chromosome, an extra chromosome, that would be considered aneuploidy. Why would you utilize PGTA if you don't have any genetic problems? Like I said, the vast majority of us are chromosomally typical with 46 chromosomes. Yet there is a possibility that any of us create an egg cell or a sperm cell that has a chromosome error. Those chromosome errors are usually not inherited. They don't come from us since most of us don't have chromosome imbalances, but they happen randomly as the egg cell or the sperm cell is maturing. And those chromosome imbalances cause miscarriages or can cause syndromes like Down syndrome. One thing that is very clear is that for us females, as we age, our risk for chromosomal errors increases. Even when we're really young, even 18 year old women can have pregnancies with chromosome errors. They can have children with Down syndrome and other chromosome syndromes. But for us females specifically, because our egg cells have been in our body our whole life, as we age, the risk for chromosome errors increases. And that's why PGTA is often a test that is especially recommended in patients who are over the age of 35 or so. Even though patients under the age of 35 could also utilize it because any of us could have a chromosome imbalance in our embryos. In order to utilize PGTA or any genetic testing on embryos, those embryos have to be outside of your body. So PGTA can be used in conjunction with in vitro fertilization, IVF, or the process where eggs are retrieved from a patient's body, fertilized with sperm outside of the body, grown in the lab for a few days, and a biopsy or a small sample is taken from that embryo, and that sample can be sent off to a laboratory. Believe it or not, you actually can take a small biopsy of about three to eight cells from the 100 to 150 cell embryo at that stage and send those cells off to a lab for testing. And then once you have those results, you and your doctor would decide probably to preferentially transfer embryos that had chromosomally normal results to improve your chances for success. 
So who is this test for? Well, you should definitely speak with your doctor about whether you are a good candidate for IVF and PGTA, depending on what they know about you and each of the gamete sources, the egg source and the sperm source. PGTA is generally available to anybody, whether you're a younger patient, you're utilizing an egg donor or sperm donor, you're an older patient. You guys, I went way over the time limit I was trying to stay under. But in summary, PGTA, pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy, is a screening tool that you can utilize with your doctor on embryos created with IVF to identify the chromosomal contents of embryos and distinguish chromosomally normal embryos from chromosomally abnormal embryos. Now, the results are not always that straightforward, and this test does not have a 100% accuracy, and it does not look for all things genetic. It specifically looks for large chromosome imbalances. So this is just meant to be a short summary. Check out some of my other videos if you'd like to know more and do a bit more of a deep dive into PGTA. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Bye, guys.